uh good evening and we welcome you to kolkata center for creativity uh before starting i would like to introduce kolkata center for creativity it is a multidisciplinary interactive art center located in kolkata we believe that research in the various disciplines of arts is absolutely essential for the wholesome development of art and artist with the team kcc facilitates various projects and platforms with focused research opportunities trying to bind theory and practice together kcc presents selected artworks as well as outcomes of researchers through exhibitions seminars and round table meetings before critics art managers and audiences for maximum exposure and appreciation on the occasion of partition remembrance day we have today remembering the partition in the shadow of 1947 an event organized in collaboration with kolkata partition museum trust it is important to recall the impact of the great divide of 1947 or the partition of india to understand the trial and tribulations of people uprooted and displaced that has continued to haunt even the following generations today's conversation will focus on the cultural and social significance of his of this division i would like to uh, invite ms rina devan director kolkata center for creativity to moderate this session she is president of icom india board member of icom intercom ms devan can most rightly be identified as a committed art administrator and leader who elevated her work to a level of artistry effortlessly for multidisciplinary and applied art she has been uh, spearheading many projects in kcc to promote research and development of different disciplines of art that leads to a voluntary and qualitative impact not only in the art field but to the society and young artists and performers she has received three prestigious fellowships australia council's international leadership program art think south asia international society for performing art usa and of emerging scholar award from ground research networks she has presented papers on travel grants in museum conferences on various international platforms that gives her vision and immediate global perspective over to you ma'am hello ma'am yes yes ma'am over to you over to you ma'am yeah thank you so much moshumi for the yes, introduction i'm sorry my connection went away yeah uh today's day is very special for many of us in uh, in india and in our neighboring countries i myself has a personal connection with partition i'm the second generation from my family who came from lahore which is now in pakistan at the time of partition and started afresh and i always wonder how my life would have been if we did not have have the partition and i'm sure many of us have that question in our minds today's day uh, we are going to we are going to remember and honor the people who gave their life for the freedom and in the process of course there were many uh, i would i'm very happy to uh, have rituparna ray here who is the managing trustee of kolkata partition uh, museum trust and uh, we are happy rituparna that you know kcc and uh, the museum are collaborating for the first time and we are taking this baby step because of the covid situation but at least we are having the artist with us and it's a pleasure i welcome you here and i would request you to give introduction about the museum uh, from your end thank you so much reena uh, a very good evening to everybody um this year uh, marks the 73rd anniversary of india's independence and partition 
As we all know, when India got divided along religious lines in 1947, the brunt of it was borne by Punjab and Bengal. But it turned out to be a very different experience for these two provinces. Uh, for Bengal, it impoverished the state, radicalized its politics, and led to a prolonged, protracted refugee crisis over decades, even as the border remained porous. Now, the specific history of Bengal, both the partition and its aftermath, is something that has never really got its due. Uh, it is not known much beyond Bengal uh, in India or outside it. And this is exactly what the Kolkata Partition Museum project seeks to redress. It aims at the establishment of a partition museum in Kolkata. And um, uh, it is spearheaded by the Kolkata Partition Museum Trust, which includes very eminent personalities, an art historian, a very re re reputed museum professional, museum curator, and um, a lawyer and chartered accountant, apart from me. And we have two, three actually main aims. Uh, if I can quickly uh, just uh, take you through them, the most important aim that we have is to memorialize the specificity of Bengal's experience of partition, the specificity, uh, in the most comprehensive manner possible. The second is uh, to change, to some extent, the discourse around partition. So whenever we think of partition, we usually think of rupture. And rightly so, because it was a defining characteristic of the event. And it has been very well recorded, you know, in history writing, films, literature. But what is often uh, not thought of as much is the quiet continuities which are still there in Bengali life. For example, there is a lot common in what we call the living heritage across both sides of the border. And that includes language, literature, food, fabric, the performative arts. We would like to emphasize this aspect as well. Even as we memorialize the history, uh, we would also like to emphasize this and we want to collaborate with Bangladesh as well. The third is that we would like to engage with the public in in meaningful ways in whichever event we do. So till now, uh, I would like you to uh, please visit our website, kolkatapartitionmuseum.org and our Facebook page for more information. Uh, since I, I will have to keep it short here, we have done a number of events last year and in this. I, I would just like to concentrate on the two main ones. So last year, we were very much supported by Jodunath both our uh, programs had happened at the inaugural event in February, and our most important event till now, which was a four-day film fest, which included features and documentaries from both sides of the Bengal border. And our chief guests of honor were uh, greats from the other side, Tanvir Mukambal and Akram Khan. And uh, we were actually advised by Gautam Ghosh in what we did, and Tata Steel uh, sponsored us. This year, we had planned, as Rina was saying, we had planned an art exhibition uh, with four contemporary artists of Bengal. But obviously, because of the pandemic, it could not happen. But we are very delighted that we have this opportunity of talking with the artists. I would, I mean, we hope to uh, have the exhibition next year. I also want to say a little bit about another ongoing project of ours. We believe in making historical knowledge accessible and available to others, which is why we have a website in place right from the start. Now, there's a very important archive called the Profullo Chakraborty Papers, which has to do with refugee resettlement in West Bengal. It is housed at the International Institute of Social History in Amsterdam. We are uh, we are about to host that in our website, the digital archive. A, a, a group of very young, enthusiastic students are spearheading that project and we are supporting it. We recently had a workshop and uh, we hope to have that archive very soon on our website. And uh, we really hope to have the exhibition uh, next year. And um, I really look forward to this webinar so, so that we can share uh, to, to some extent the work the artists will be doing for us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rituparna. I'll quickly now go to uh, Rajeshwari. Rajeshwari, uh, I would like to invite you to take the conversation forward by introducing the exhibition, the concept why we are doing the planning to do the exhibition and introduction of the artist. We are already a little bit behind schedule, so please try to keep it very brief. Rajeshri. Thank you so much. Rajeshwari. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Rina. Um, 
As an individual who is interested in both history and art, the artistic expression that is born out of partition and its aftermath has always claimed my attention. It was such a defining event, you see, and one that left a permanent scar on the psyche of the nation. So now we are more or less familiar with the work of the Midnight's children. That is the generation that bore the brunt of this trauma. Can we have the slide, please, Gora? The next yes. one, please. Yes, uh, these are, this is uh, Mourners by Pranath Mago. The next one, please. We'll quickly go through his works. Refugees, both by Paritoshin and Krishan Khanna and the night, untitled work by Taib Mehta. The next one. This is Exodus by Krishan Khanna. You all know Krishan Khanna has worked at length with Partition. And a little later, Otpita Singh, Lipping Bridges. But I kept on, uh, please keep it here. But I kept on wondering how the next generations who engage, how they engaged with the trauma, because Partition is a wound that has not healed. So this exhibition, <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> this exhibition was planned primarily to showcase the work of the five artists who have been working in various ways and various mediums for a long time. So it all started with uh, Paula Shengupta's works, Rivers of Blood. So you see, Paula Shengupta is an artist, academic, and curator resident in Kolkata. Trained as a printmaker, um, Paula has worked across various mediums like printmaking, textile, embroidery, and much, much more. So in 2008, Paula has been artist in residence at the Brikto Arts Trust. So uh, Rivers of Blood is a visual rendering of the diary she has maintained while traveling across Bangladesh and visiting towns and villages to which her uh, family belonged. Next one. Gora. The second artist we have here is Vinayam Bhattacharya. Vinayam too, like uh, Pallavi, is an artist and academic. He is assistant professor in the Department of Painting, College of Art and Design. And interestingly, he lives in the India-Bangladesh border area. And his interest in border has been both from his lived reality and his historical consciousness and the pain of partition. The next one. Unfortunately, we don't have him with us today. He's Dilip Mitro, a very senior professor from Kola Bhabon, who grew up in the refugee colonies of Belgoria. So the refugee life of the colonies comes alive in Dilip Das painting, drawings, and sketches, some of which he will be sharing with the public for the very first time. The next one, Gora. Amrita is an alumna of the Kala Bhavan, and Amrita is very curious about people's stories and how the small narrative leads to the grand narrative. So this has led her engagement with partition, especially with Riti Ghatak's films. And despite having no family connection with uh, Bangladesh or partition, she has engaged with the partition very strongly, as you'll see in her artist book, Desh Bhag Mon Bhag. Amrita specializes in making artist books. The next one, Gora. And finally, we'll have having Debashish with us. Debashish Mukherjee is a contemporary artist based in Delhi. Debashish was born in Chapra, Bihar. And then he went on to complete his art education in Benares. And finally, life and career took him to Delhi. So the concept as home has always been very central to Debashish's work. H how and where do we look at home? So his works tended to be informed by objects, memories, and past. So partition, as you can see, provides the psychological topography for this exhibition. 
The pictorial narratives we have are embedded in the geographical sites of ancestry, the physical border, the trajectories of nostalgia in refugee colonies, and stories of the inherited memories. Now I'll hand over it to Rina so she can directly engage with the artists. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, uh, Rajeshri. You were absolutely bang on time also. So thank you very much for that. I would like to now invite uh, Paula Sen Gupta to present her work and we will have a conversation later. Paula, over to you. Thank you, Rina. And uh, thank you, Rajeshri, for uh, inviting me to be a part of this exhibition. And uh, Ritu Parna, I'd just like to say that I'm really excited that uh, this museum is in the pipeline. And uh, I'll be really happy to have it see the light of day. And uh, I'm uh, available to you for any kind of assistance that you might need for it. Uh, could we just have my first slide on the screen, please? Um, so uh, I uh, am a child of partition. Uh, my, uh, both my parents uh, are from Bangladesh, though um, they were born in the 1930s in Burma, uh, because a lot of Bengalis used to be in service in Burma. And uh, uh, consequently, um, at the time of, uh, my mother's family is actually twice displaced, once from Burma during the uh, Second World War, and once from Bangladesh, uh, what used to be then, uh, what, from what used to be undivided Bengal uh, at the time of partition in 1947. Uh, my father's family was uh, in, uh, uh, is from a, a village called uh, Batisha, which is in the Pumila district, that is uh, closer to the border with Tripura. In fact, it's, it's so close that you can actually see the barbed wire that uh, separates the two countries. My mother's family is uh, closer to Kolkata uh, in what used to be uh, Joshua, but is now uh, in the Narayan district and from the village of Kalia. Um, so as children, uh, you know, we grew up hearing stories of the homestead and uh, my grandfather was a great storyteller and as children we would gather around him and we would listen to these stories from both my grandmother as well as my grandfather. Uh, now these were extremely romantic tales of uh, the homestead and uh, what life used to be like in the village and uh, you know the, the Durga Puja from my mother's family that was a huge puja and, uh, and so we grew up listening to these very, very colorful and romantic stories. My grandparents uh, never really passed on the, um, any of the trauma, the animosity, the bloodshed uh, that actually occurred with partition. But as we grew older, um, you know, I would keep pestering my parents and my uncles and my aunts uh, to take us to Bangladesh. And I found that they never agreed. They always evaded the issue. They just did not want to go. And uh, I could never ever persuade them. And I realized uh, when I was much older that it was, uh, that, that uh, they carried a tremendous pain in their hearts, they carried a tremendous sense of uh, loss for what could never be theirs again. And, uh, you know, they did not want to relive that pain. So it was actually not until the age of 40 uh, that I crossed the border to Bangladesh for the first time. And I was invited in 2008 by uh, Brito, uh, uh, which is an artist initiative in Bangladesh. Ish to, uh, to attend a workshop as an observer. Uh, and I went for just four days. But I traversed uh, a large span of Bangladesh going northwards from Dhaka to Bogura. 
and uh, I, uh, it was a very unsettling experience for me. And so much so that uh, I felt like here's a place where I belong, but I'm still, but I, but I'm still an alien. And uh, and when I returned from that trip, I knew that I would have to return. It was it was just a, it was just a, a compulsive desire uh, to return. I, I could not not return. I felt like I had left something incomplete. And uh, then I went back to Bangladesh again in the same year in the winter. Um, but uh, this time uh, I, uh, I went for a longer period of time uh, for a month and, uh, and, and for about 10 days of that time, my mother also uh, joined me and we traveled together across the length and breadth of the country. And it was very different traveling with her because she actually, I mean, the last time she had been back to Bangladesh was around the age of 10. Uh, because she went back three times after partition because the, 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 the Durga Puja in their, uh, in their home continued until it was just not possible anymore. It continued for three years. So she kept going back. But so she, you know, even as a child of 10, she had some memory of uh, the place. And so all of this, I traveled the length and breadth. I found my father's family home. I found my mother's family home. Um, and I, uh, you know, um, is it possible to zoom in on that image on the screen a little? Is, is that a possibility? Uh, so, so what you see there is actually an etching, uh, which uh, I, uh, made and that's and that's the aeroplane uh, on which we flew in and out of Dhaka. Uh, but if you if it was possible to zoom in, then you would be able to see that uh, uh, it actually simulates um, the katha stitch. And could we go to the next slide, please? So I discovered. Uh, okay, we have two slides simultaneously here. I don't know why. But anyway, uh, we, so I discovered uh, the Nokshi Katha in Bangladesh, which I then started to explore very exhaustively. And this particular Nokshi Katha is made by my mother and my grandmother together. Uh, and uh, so the Nokshi Katha, uh, and, and this particular piece sort of became the, the, the kind of leitmotif of my uh, entire project, of the entire Rivers of Blood project. And um, so the Nuksh, so he somehow brought across the border a very hybrid form of the Katha. Um, but uh, but Nukshi Katha in its pure form uh, is firstly a Katha that can be used on both sides, but it is also a, a method of storytelling. So for the person who embroiders the Katha, and in most cases, the Katha is a domestic object. No, previous slide, please. So the Katha is a domestic object and in most cases um, what happens is that uh, that uh, that it, it becomes a narrative field for the person or persons who are making the Katha. So the Nokshi Katha is very rarely made on a premeditated pattern. It is a running uh, uh, sort of pattern in which the person embroidering is using the needle like a drawing tool. And, uh, and playing out her, uh, you know, her stories, her anxieties, her desires, her aspirations, everything on that, uh, on, on that uh, quilt. And, uh, uh, and so this is actually uh, the medium that I now sought to adopt, uh, you know, sort of uh, to, to uh, claim uh, for uh, making uh, my work for this project. So at first I was simulating it uh, in, uh, in, in etchings and other printmaking mediums, which, you know, I'm trained as a printmaker. But, but later into the project, I actually started embroidering. Can we go to the next slide, please? Uh, so this is the first work in the project. It is called uh, uh, Cox's Bazaar, the East-West Fish Bar. And it is a hypothetical uh, menu book for uh, 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 a fish restaurant. 
Can we go to the next slide, please? Um, so yeah, here you can see it a little bit in detail. Um, so there are four such books and they go from starters to main course and so on. And what they contain is fish recipes. They contain fish recipes from both sides of the border as well as Anglo-Indian uh, fish recipes. And all of this is kind of sandwiched in layers in this menu book. And, uh, and the menu books are laid on a tablecloth which maps my entire journey across uh, uh, Bangladesh. And these, uh, you know, this tablecloth is pieced together from uh, crochet table linen, which is a colonial inheritance. On it is the Nokshi Katha. And then of course there are drawings and etchings and so on. So material and medium are very, very important in this work because they are signifiers in themselves where I'm, where I'm layering the very hybrid nature of our inheritance through the use of various embroideries that are on the one hand indigenous and on the other hand colonial. Uh, and also you can see here little headphones. So each, uh, uh, so you can actually sit at this table, read the menu, and listen to little anecdotes, uh, uh, which are connected in a very oblique way that story is narrated firsthand uh, of, uh, you know, from people in uh, Bangladesh. Next, please. I made three Almiras as a part of this Rivers of Blood project, which Rajasri is very, very fond of and determined to have for the exhibition. Uh, so this one is called My Cabinet of Recipes. It contains within it three mannequins, three female mannequins belonging to three generations of women with one wearing a sari in a very anglicized way and the other two wearing, you know, who are her daughters wearing uh, dresses. And, uh, and you can't see this, but on three sides of this Almira are uh, recipes. Uh, and, you know, they're recipes of my, my mother can cook, my mother-in-law can cook, and I can cook. And they, uh, so a lot of this project actually dwells on cuisine and how cuisine becomes so multi-layered and reflective of our inheritances, uh, you know, over the ages and is actually, uh, you know, sort of contains so much history within it. Uh, and yet it is something that, I mean, these are sort of micro histories. If you turn the pages of a recipe, uh, like a homegrown recipe book, you'll find recipes from all over the world, which reflect our very, very hybrid nature, uh, uh, you know, our hybrid upbringings. Next slide, please. So these are the other two Almiras, which uh, are kind of his and hers Almiras, and they essentially reflect, uh, um, you know, the, the notion of how liaisons were made in independent India as, uh, as artists, uh, I'm sorry, as, as people uh, uh, came across as refugees, uh, uh, you know, across the border into India, but they carried baggage with them. And this baggage, uh, you know, uh, sort of led them to form liaisons that continued to hold ground, uh, you know, where they had come from. So it sort of became important as to which caste, which village, uh, and so on you came from. And it was still on the basis of those that these liaisons were formed. This particular uh, work pertains to uh, the marriage of my mother and my father. My father was an army officer. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, the only time that he uh, ever went back to Bangladesh was in 1971 during the Bangladesh War of Liberation, in the line, you know, when he was called in the line of duty. He never went back otherwise. And what you see in there are uh, his army trunks, his uh, uniform shirt that I embroidered on, uh, little cots, their little doll's beds, and, uh, uh, you know, which uh, one is from has embroidery, uh, uh, you know, with my mother's village name on it, one with my father's. Inside the trunk are these satin nuptial pillows embroidered with male and female genitalia. Next slide, please. Um, this There's is part over of what, time for Okay, this is we part are all over with it. Yeah, this is Sorry. part of what uh, Rajasri uh, showed. This is a book called Burma to Benapol in six, uh, it has six sequences. Uh, this, uh, mm, so it's essentially about the journey from, um, 
um, it spans actually a long uh, uh, length of time. The, the journey in 1947 that my mother's family made uh, when they came away as refugees, uh, this is crossing the river uh, Chindwin in Manipur uh, into, uh, Bangladesh, uh, from Bangladesh into India. Next slide. And this is, uh, yeah, this, this is the last sequence in that set of six where, uh, uh, you know, this, this is from 2008 when my mother crossed the border uh, uh, at Pinapol and, uh, you know, in two hours she was home in Salt Lake. But it took her, she had not been back since the age of uh, 10 and she was 70 then. So it took her 60 years to make a journey that took two hours. You know, that was the irony of this whole thing. Next slide, please. This is a work called The Tobacco Trail, which uh, uh, is, is more, um, uh, it, it's, it, this is based in the Chittagong Hill Tracks, uh, which is a very, very contentious area. Um, uh, can we go to the next slide, please? It's highly contentious. There is tobacco cultivation along the borders of the Sangu River. Uh, and uh, I spent a day bobbing up and down on the Sangu River in a boat and, uh, um, and then, uh, you know, with somebody who, who's a Tripura from the region and then came back to his house for dinner at night. Um, it was a peculiar, and he bought all this, all these ingredients uh, on his way home. And he, they, he, so his wife is Bengali Muslim. He is Hindu Tripura. His daughter is a mix. There were two dinner guests who were Bengali Muslim and there was me who was Indian Hindu. So, and we all sat and ate together, but you know, there were, it was like, I mean, the food was, the guests were as much as a pot, of a pot puree as were the, uh, the, as was the food itself. Next slide, please. This is the milestone to my mother's village in Kalia. It says Kalia five kilometers and, uh, uh, and you know, you see three uh, uh, little altars there which have the video documenting our trip. And what you see in uh, the, these two, if you notice here, there is a ring. So when we went finally to my mother's uh, home, all that was surviving uh, of her huge, uh, you know, Zamindari house there was just the puja mandap. And on the wall of that mandap were these iron rings, which were used, they had a huge uh, protima or deity, you know, and those rings were used to anchor the, uh, the, the deity, the protima uh, to the wall so that it did not heal over. And it was only, she had complete, the, the orientation of the house had changed completely. And it was only when she saw those rings that everything fell into place for her. And she said, you know, this is where the Pratima used to be. This is where my, my mother and my aunts used to sit and have their evening gossip. That's where the river was and so on. So, yeah, so this is sort of the last work in the presentation and we can talk more uh, as we carry on. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paula. You actually took us to your mother's village, it seemed. And you know, that's the beauty uh, of having the relationship with Bangladesh is that one can still travel back and try to find their roots. Whereas I see the opposite uh, on the Punjab side, like my family, we, we cannot really go back so easily and find the roots, uh, which is very unfortunate. So I'll come back to you so that, you know, we can first give chance to everybody to show their presentations. Uh, Vinayakda? Uh, yes. Yeah, can we mm -hmm. have you? We have 10 minutes. I know there is yes, so yes, much yes. to share and we would yes, love yes. to continue to listen. But yes. <laughs> yeah, let's keep to the time. Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Over to I you. want to start. Yes, uh, just I'm, uh, I'm Vinayak. Uh, thanks uh, to uh, Creative Kolkata uh, Center for Creativity and uh, Rina and uh, Rajasri and all three artists and uh, Ritu, Ritu, no? Yes, Ritu is there. Yeah, yeah. Ritu Parna, yeah. Ritu Parna, Ritu Parna, yes, yes. So, and uh, today is the sanitized partition day. This is the specific name for, where well, I suggest that name. It's a black day. 
I am going to discuss about the border between India and Bangladesh. I am working with the land since 2012. I have traveled through three districts of Bengal. North 24 Ghana specific, uh, specific uh, area is Bonga and Ghojadana. Nodia is a grade area and North Murshidabad is Chot Pirajpur near, near Rajshahi district, means opposite side of Bangladesh. I have seen border fencing which is made of iron wire and is black in color. Uh, this is the first slide. Uh, actually, this is the. Uh, I have taken the, uh, this inspiration from uh, Ichamuti River uh, from North Chubbish The uh, This is the. Actually, uh, here, the water does not care of the fencing. It flows as usual. This is the this is the, the thought behind it. The, the work uh, which I had done in uh, 2013, 14. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, second one is uh, by uh, doing this work, I wanted to represent the sharpness and violence of the border fencing. Uh, this is the thing. Next slide. This work done by me uh, firstly depicts the sky space along with fencing. Secondly, it shows or represents a time of dusk. And one more thing is that a bat is an uh, unimportant black animal in our society, which does not serve us economically or even environmentally. Next slide. This work is uh, done using ink and brush and paper. This work represents to be seen by me from the uh, left side of the fencing to the right side of it. It's a divided paddy field which seemed to me as a, a foreign land. The white color of the birds are, and their uh, grandeur is striking to me, and also their huge number has a community sense. Next slide. I have conceptualized this work from the aspect that the border fencing is representing to me as a dead body. I think that the concept of partition depicts nothing but death. Next. Yes, this is the actually the, the previous one, please. Previous one, uh, this is uh, actually work, uh, working studio in uh, North Chobishwagana in Ashok Nagar. Uh, the, and the, the, the work is going on in my studio, black and white work. Next slide. Uh, this is an image of me when I was working in my studio. Uh, incidentally, that the day uh my shirt and apple oh, sorry 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 this is uh, this is the photographic representation of some children of bangladesh next one uh, the following three works are recent and uh, depict the death and destruction that happened due to the uh, Amphan cyclone, just as my border area works were done in the aspect that black is the sense of fear and white is the representative of both peace and death. In the same way, I did this work in the aspect of death, destruction, fear, and fright. N nowadays, we are working, uh, facing extensive development of technology, but this is used by a very small uh, percentage of people in our society. 
living in the technological world we did not know or even we could not think of that a person could not could walk 2000 km which we understood in the previous 4 or 5 months next one this is also a factory area distorted in amfan uh, in uh, this uh, bordering area of locality and uh, all things were de destroyed uh, with uh, all all machineries also next uh, this is all dead bodies uh, uh, which we had seen many uh, newspaper and uh, uh, the uh, time of uh, covid 19 okay then mm. that's all that's all uh, that's was all thank you everyone thank you so much uh, vinayak da um, while uh, i felt while paula's work took us through her personal journey of the family and how nakshi gata actually is a medium of expression for women and it became a medium of expression for the artist herself also at the same time your work in contrast is uh, taking us to the border currently like what is happening yes. there currently because you're working there and it is so uh, so heartwarming to see from your eyes through your perspective that how <laughs> you are seeing partition is death and which is true because partition brings negativity death destructions as you rightly said thank you so much vinagda will come back to you uh, moving on to debushish uh, yes. debushish i would like to please uh, present your uh, presentation thank you thanks rina thank you rajeshri for inviting me uh, you know today is uh, 17th and exactly 70 can you hear me yes we can hear you okay so exactly 73 years ago on this day uh, one sec one sec vinayak da could you uh, could yes. you please put yourself on mute could you please put yourself on mute thank you so much yes 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 <laughs> carry on debashish we can yeah, hear you exactly 73 years ago on this day the line of partition was finally announced now after 73 years we are discussing this and what i feel that uh, with one you know stroke of a pen uh, millions of people became homeless and that was the largest displacement ever happened in human history so i'm not getting too much into hist in the you know, historical context and moving straight to my work now imagine if we travel back to the time for an aerial survey so what do we see the millions of burned destroyed and abandoned homes the empty dark spaces without any soul now what is the difference in those hard working visuals versus visuals of godra or as recent as uh, you know what we saw in delhi we are still living under the shadow of partition aren't we we still have the same amount of venom and hatred for each other a large chunk of this generation hasn't learned anything from the past actually and the other day we were discussing and reena was mentioning that how uh, her grandfather came uh, absolutely you know penniless without anything and started here from scratch and how they didn't discuss any hatred actually but this generation what we saw and i am in delhi and what i saw you know this month of february was heartbreaking absolutely heartbreaking so my quest or inquiry oscillates between our personal memories and a deeper sense of loss and i look at this placement at large in contemporary context the series of portraits i would be discussing here are part of a long distance journey so uh, this particular one which is which you are seeing on the screen is called portrait of a home and so the home remains pretty much uh, one of the key elements and has a you know a recurrent presence in my work and i typically address them as spaces a home i have lost due to uh, displacement 
and now exists only in my you know memory in the landscape of my memory so this is this particular one is a hand stitched uh, you know texture on uh, blended cotton which reminded me which reminds me actually of uh, you know my childhood and the layered stories of katha uh, you know typically in hits in it next please okay this particular uh, work is called uh, gandhi's last fast or the portrait of a memory now this particular work was part of the art fair this year at akar prakar booth and this kind of you know if you see this two uh, very strange but uh, in one is uh, limestone this is a sandstone a solid sandstone the pillar and the lower part is uh, can you go to the next one i think that has a, big, a clearer picture yeah so that's a, a clearer picture if you can zoom in a little bit i'm not sure if it is possible so this is about uh, gandhi's last fast which you know what we call the calcutta killings which began on the 16th of august 1946 and uh, that continued for the next four or five days in the intense form of killing more than i think 5000 people were dead and how gandhi ji single handedly uh, went to uh, noa khari and faced a lot of a lot of resentment and but the way he went uh, village to village door to door and actually uh, convinced people that be fearless and so this particular work has very do different kind of and you know medium one is textile which is very soft very fluid and the second one is stone so uh, so what i am trying to portray here that you know if you put together two very contrast medium which is which which could be you know a metaphor as a religion can certainly stand tall as a monument of you know, unity so uh, this particular work is very very close to me uh, next please can you just go uh, uh, two more one one more one more one more one more yeah and come back now you can come back so basically these are portrait 2 3 4 and 5 what we call so these port four portraits are about spaces or passage of time perhaps a layered memory an abstract mapping of past uh, these are uh, kind of layered cottons uh, put together as a form and they are about 11 inches by 16 inches but uh, each of them uh, we use about 30 meters of fabric so they are very tiny tiny slits but if you uh, look at closely so they are like you know a portrait of spaces i call them portrait and uh, if you look at uh, at a very different uh, perspective metaphorically so it's kind of a mapping of the homes where i stayed or the time what i have left behind next please yeah so this particular work uh, is called 22 moons and uh, instead of this is part of a large body of work and had 22 uh, circular compositions depicting my years spent uh, uh, in particular place before we had to move out of the place and medium is textile and industrial texture i would be happy to uh, you know take questions on this if you can just move next two which are kind of details of this work yeah one more yeah so these are the details of uh, so there were 22 such uh, portraits can we move to next please yeah so can we just once again same we can go four slides and come back like maybe perhaps the middle can we just go next yeah one more yeah and one more yeah and you can come back to yeah we can come back to maybe the first or second yeah so these uh, portraits are uh, they are, they are I, i titled them like portraits of frozen rain clouds 1 2 3 and 4 so these are part of a larger body of uh, my newer work and uh, the title portraits of frozen rain clouds that the medium is graphite on soft stone and it revolves around a thought which is uh, rather metaphoric and i personally love rain but sometimes i wonder at the time of partition it was monsoon it was august 
and how people would have reacted to uh, you know this rain laden clouds because while crossing the border uh, without any shelter uh, the rains would have created in a lot of a uh, lot of issues and i don't think this uh, most most certainly they were not welcome so um, you know it carries a scar of a partition so this particular work i'm still working on these cities and hopefully uh, when we do the exhibition next year uh, it's going to be ready next please one more one more yeah and one more yes so now uh, this work is titled river song is portrait of my mother and when initially rajeshri and i were discussing and she decided to keep this work as part of the physical show a thought crossed my mind that uh, how the change in perspective or you know paradigm shift can change the entire narrative of a work and now when i look at this work uh, as uh, you know noted poet and curator ranjit hoskote had called this work as a landscape and a portrait uh, both it looks very different under this light if we look at uh, under the light of partition and a dialogue between a viewer and a work uh, sometimes adds uh, another dimension which wasn't originally intended so this particular fabric uh, work once again uh, you know this is not a woven fabric it's a uh, i you know i actually bought um, a whole bunch of ropes and then kind of cut them and turn them back to uh, small small uh, threads and then uh, you know they are put together uh, certainly a lot of technicalities are there but it is not a woven this is about um, 40 feet long and uh, is about about a meter wide so uh, that's the technical side of it yeah next please yeah so this work is called a uh, portrait from the past uh my grandmother my dida uh, she was from silet and this portrait from archival collection uh, you know printed on fabric bolts is once again very uh, personal to me but uh, you know my i uh, my dida came from silet and uh, she was married in the year of 40s 1946 just a year before um, the independence and she could never go back and when i was born and when i met her she became widow at very very early age at the age of 29 and so i saw her wearing uh, whole life uh, white than what we call in bangla you know but uh, and so whenever i would uh, you know by mistake walk into her uh, room where which we would every every is not allowed and she would keep her things so so i would see the piles of white uh, sarees kept in her mirror so this is once again uh, you know these are the bolts of fabrics is about 6 uh, feet tall and uh, and there that we have transferred an image and this is this carries two images actually both side next please well uh, this is uh, rajeshri for you because since you insisted to keep this particular work uh, this work is called a letter to zarina and uh, zarina one of my favorite artist uh, who was alive during 1947 partition of the subcontinent and the pain of being uprooted kind of haunted her whole life she created a large body of work around this uh, around the partition and home her quest for home only ended when she breathed her last uh, on april 25th of uh, 2020 so this work i created during lockdown uh, the night she passed away I, I, i it was very late night and i heard the news and within the limited uh, source of medium i had uh, i had written a poem and uh, then i wrote it i wrote it actually originally in bangla and then i translated it because uh, the gallery wanted it in, in, in english so uh, then i kind of created a, a home for her it's more like a mapping of her home 
And uh, so I just hope that she found finally a home, which she looked all her life. So I will uh, read the poem and end my presentation. I'm really happy to take more questions. So the poem goes like, I stood alone in front of your shadow, saw you cross yet another boundary, witnessed how you turned the sky into dark indigo. I stood alone, embracing the unwritten alphabet in front of an empty canvas. I heard the sound of the shifting of horizons. It took me a little closer to home. Monochromes accompanied me the whole night. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Debashish. Listening to you is like actually a poetry. Um, I really didn't want you to end. It's, it's, it's really, you, you took us on a journey. And um, uh, though I'm taking the questions in the last, but there is one uh, pertinent question which I would like to take right now is that uh, Meenakshi, sorry, um, Meenakritam is asking, can you please put some light about the materials you used in the Moon series and their literal interpretations? Okay, so the Moon series uh, is basically, uh, they are embroidery hoops and, the, and they're all, the base is all textiles, they're all fabrics, they're linen, cotton, they're blended jacquards and some printed fabrics. And on top of that, I use industrial texture and they are kind of, we create this uh, surface, it's like a surface of a moon. And then uh, on few of them, even I've used beads now, this particular one skin, you know, it's like 22 years I spent the literal meaning, if you're asking. So it's, I uh, was born, my father was in railways. And, uh, you know, we were, I was born in a place called Chapra in Bihar. And so I spent, before moving to BHU to do my fine arts, I was there for 22 years. So these, each moon represents each year. And very interesting, you know, where uh, in railway quarters, I remember uh, they had a budget for, uh, whitewashing, not painting, but whitewashing every year. So every year, they'll be, uh, you know, they'll come and paint, but they would not scrape. So sometimes, you know, if, uh, if it, there is a damp or something in the weather, so you start peeling off, then we see about, you know, 30 layers of paint. And they're all British houses. These, these colonies were British time colonies, very old. So very, very interesting, you know, textured walls uh, we could discover. So this particular series was... Uh, for, for those 22 years. I hope I answered the question. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, you're actually bringing alive my own memories from uh, New Delhi and uh, my own visuals are coming alive. Thank you so much. Now we're moving to the last presentation of the evening. Uh, may I request uh, Amrita to please uh, present her uh, art. Hello, everyone. Uh, Hello. Hi. Uh, I would just like to say that uh, I think uh, even I'm watching through this uh, conversation and representation of works, I have one, in fact, two basic differences with, uh, between uh, with all the other artists over here. Number one is that, that I have not got any personal partition connection because uh, both our parents, are from actually this side. So in my home, I have not heard any partition stories from childhood in that way, the way Pauladi was mentioning, or I know all the other ones. And number two is that uh, I have not worked on this particular topic for long, but I have been very, very interested. Uh, very specifically, I remember uh, back in 2012, I was doing one... Uh, book designing course with Siegel School of uh, Designing and Publishing. And where Urvashi Butalia, she came one day and she was giving a lecture and she was basically talking about her book, Other Side of Silence. And she was uh, just telling the story of her ex uh, experience of going to Pakistan for the first time and the partition. And I had a deep impact of that, you know, and uh, 
history has always been one of my very uh, favorite subjects right from school but that was one time when i heard this uh, lecture of urvashi I, i have started taking more interest not only about the partition stories but i think that was one particular time uh, when i was looking very desperately for changes from all sorts of uh, uh, direction Uh, where my work is concerned and i actually changed from that time onwards from uh, i have been always uh, telling stories through my work but this was the time when i was coming out from the nutshell of my personal stories and looking for people stories so uh, somehow that was the time also when i was started getting curious about the region where i live so if i take it broadly it's south east asia if i take it in a more uh, narrow way so that bengal where i live where i have been brought up and all these things so uh, i was started collecting people stories from uh, for various projects and at that was a point when different projects came to me also which were all related to different kind of either uh, they were social context or historical context or people stories so um, this was the time and i i was just talking to many of my friends at that time and we are, i was thinking that it should be done because urvashi was telling one particular phrase for many a time that the first generation who has experienced partition they're fading off right now so if you really need to collect the first hand stories this is the time now you should be doing it and i really felt this is important you know so i have spoken to many many of my friends regarding this but i think i have never uh, worked on this mainly for this one reason that i haven't got a partition story in back in my home uh, so i really would like to thank rajeshwari kapadhai for pushing me into this you know because at when i got into this project and i'm actually working on it right now too and uh, i i realized that i was kind of ready to uh, deal with this subject i guess so even when uh, i was asked to work for this particular uh, exhibition so my this primary dilemma was always there that i was i haven't got one, any story from my side so what should be my starting point and then i realized after i was starting reading things and everything and then i was talking to people and i realized that everyone was telling that there are two iconic figures in both sides of india who has worked extensively on partition so for the from the western frontier it's sadat hasan manto from the eastern frontier this is rishik ghatok so i started with rishik ghatok actually and i was picking up his three uh, movie trilogy is meghe dhaka tara shubharna rekha and komol gandhar for my personal reasons komol gandhar was my favorite so i picked it up more uh, intently and then i realized that it's not like that you know so i was i was actually trying to map the dilemma of a class of people who has been divided by the souls and this went on for long actually and then i realized i don't need to have a personal story because i have been brought up here and it's it's not necessarily it has to be my story but it's our story because we have seen all these things so if you started from a football club or to your uh, eating habit of uh, whether you in what direction you eat your rice dal and fish and your uh, rituals of marriages so there are plenty of folklore songs parodies uh you know personal jokes and all these things which are embedded into this within this partition and this two you know uh, different set of people called bangal and ghoti so i started making them so can you go to the next slide slide please so i started putting all those memories so my focal point as i told you that started with komol gandhar and this is a story from uh the nobanno drama that has been pictureized in komol gandhar and i was really interested in uh this dilemma you know that this is my nation but my desh is on that side 
And so this, which one is your desh and which one is your country? So this dilemma, and you will see in Shubhonorekha of Hrithik Ghatok, they're saying that there were camps, refugee camps, they were so distinctly of different districts. And they're saying that this particular refugee camp is from Dhaka Bikrampur, and I cannot let anyone enter from Pabna or Rajshahi because we will lose our identities. Okay, so this dilemma and this mixing up of things, I wanted to do it over here. So this is one accordion book actually. So these are the pages of it. So uh, I have not displayed it anywhere. So I'm just putting some glimpses over here and there will be more things which are not yet done or halfway through. So can we go to the next slide, please? So, and there are, you know, there are layers. So there are layers of um, Bengali sari. There's of um, the design of what we call Lokthi Ralpona. There are uh, lines from different poems, from different, uh, you know, um, pieces of literature. And in, above up there, you can see there's a replica of one of the drawings of Kirir Kutul, uh, illustrated by Satyajit Ray. So this is the typical village scene of Bengal that has been de depicted. And this was one undivided Bengal, what we used to learn. So the, this is a mixture or collage of every kind of emotion that a race as Bengali, they do have it. So can we go to the next slide, please? So this is once again, uh, we can just go roughly. So this is once again, one uh, scene from Nobanno and the crow, I could not resist putting up here. This is actually the crow from Navarun Bhattacharya. So in one side, we have Bijan Bhattacharya's um, drama. And the other side, we have Navarun Bhattacharya, the father and son. And this is the great raven from Kangal Malshat, so who was the all-knowing kind of raven. So I had to put it somewhere. I, ha I have uh, it's, it's done in a graphic narrative style. So then the dialogues have been put into this crow's mouth and we can go to the next one. And this is, I think the iconic image from Komal Gandhar movie. So uh, where they're standing, where the border has been created, the rail line has been cut off. So, uh, so it has been like this only. Can we go to the next one also? So these are a few pages of the Korean book and um, Actually, I'm working more on it. So this one is done. Can we go to the next one? I think, uh, yeah. So these are some older works which are not um, directly made for this particular project. But as I told you, to 2012 onwards, I started working on this entire region. So I started a uh, my personal project. This was uh, around all the neighboring countries and it went on for around four or five years actually. I was going to all the countries of trying to uh, make connection with them. So um, in Bangladesh, I started it with Bangladesh too. And uh, very interestingly, I over there, I found out the story of displacement from a young guy who is actually migrated from Nigeria. So he was born and brought up in Nigeria and he came back when he was around 24, 25. And he could not, you know, uh, mix up with the, uh, with the social, cultural, every context over there in Dhaka. So it was kind of the same story what uh, whom we call Bangal. They faced in the first few years or first few decades when they migrated here. And this is one story that I collected from Karachi. So uh, this was not intended though, but uh, this girl who told me the story, she told me that uh, she has got one uh, nightmare of trees falling down. And this nightmare is something that she used to get for generations. Her mother sees this, her aunt sees this, and there are other people in her family who sees this. So I was going through that the dream, meanings of dream in Google. And the first thing that came out that the meaning of this, this is a very common dream. And this is a story which uh, goes to rootlessness. And then she told me that both her family, they have migrated one from Lucknow, one from Chennai. And for first 16 years, because her, I think her grandfather, he used to work in army. So they used to roam around. 
15, 16 different cities. So they always suffered from this displacement. So this is one common story of our subcontinent, I think. So can we go to the next slide also? And this is one work, this is called Following the Box, I think. I started working with this social, cultural, and historical context. Starting with this, so this was one adventure actually with a set of unknown photographs uh, of Second World War uh, taken by some unknown uh, American soldier. So two American curators come here in Calcutta with those box, with that box of uh, photographs in Calcutta, not knowing anything. And I just met them accidentally, you know, because I was having a show at that time and they dropped in Calcutta at, I think the evening before and they wanted to just look around and we met. And then we started talking and everything. So this was the story, this was a 1945 story. So we, this is, I think the starting point where I have started dealing with historical events and uh, stories of, uh, you know, from past and with real people and everything. And my people's story started from there. So I think I have to show you this much till now, because as I told you that my work is in process, and by the time we will have the show, I think I will be able to show you something more. So I think that's it for me. It's phenomenal, uh, Amrita, really. And I'm really uh, feeling that we should have actually had one session, one full session for one artist only, because there is so much to talk, so much to reflect on, which yes. I'm not really able to do that. And uh, what I'm thinking now is that maybe we'll I'll discuss with Rituparna and Rajeshri, and we will uh, create a blog of uh, these conversations that we had, so that we'll come back to you individually with my uh, my publishing department, and we'll try to uh, you know talk to you more, so that at least people can read in the blog if they can't listen to everything because it's amazing. Each one of you is so different from each other. You have their own uh, stories to tell and. Um, it's really nice. So I'll just quickly take a few questions because uh, we would still want to close as much as possible on time. Paula, this is for you. Uh, the partition of the country caused pain, death, separation of people. But at the same time, it opened up possibilities between communities, led to massive sociological changes. How was it reflected on artists' work before partition and the generation afterward. Paula. Well, there is one generation that was directly impacted by partition uh, who actually lived this nightmare. And there is uh, another generation uh, like us who inherited it. Um, so, the generation that preceded us, I mean, we have seen, um, um, you know, I mean, we've seen artists carry this lifelong. I mean, for example, if you look at an artist like Logan Choudhury, for example, um, you know, uh, till date, he uh, carries the scars uh, of partition in his work. You can see it everywhere. You can, you can see it in an artist like Sean Nathor. It was his lifelong preoccupation, wounds. It just remained with him all his life. Or, uh, you, know, uh, you know, my favorite, Chitta Prashad. In fact, I was looking at Vinayak's work today and I just felt so <laughs> strongly that, uh, you know, Vinayak is Thank you. just completely carrying that legacy forward. Um, and and Chitta Prashant's work was very very contemporary in his own time, and and you know it completely impacted by uh, the circumstances that he lived in, and uh, and Binayak's response is so similar as is his use of the medium, uh, and yet uh, you know Binayak is responding uh, to uh, uh, to the aftermath of partition that uh, you know the, the people around him are living even today. So it is still that baggage, that legacy that we carry. And uh, so, uh, so, you know, um, and, and there are just so many of us who have actually not 
been able to shake it off, even though uh, in theory, uh, you know, it is uh, a thing of the past. It's, it's sort of, uh, I mean, we are 73 years down now, but in, uh, but in Bengal, uh, I mean, as you were correctly saying, Reena, Punjab is a sealed border. Um, but uh, here we have a porous border in Bengal and in the Northeast. And as a result of this, till date, we carry the burden of partition. We have refugees filtering in every single day. And, uh, you know, so, so I think artists, writers, you know, just keep, you know, people from the, from the arts in general continue to respond to this situation. It is not a baggage that we've shaken off. Thank you so much, Paula. Um, Binayak, as uh, yes, Paula yes. was rightly, she was rightly mentioning your your work is <laughs> carrying on the legacy of Chitta So I, I was really touched with that work of your uh, where you uh, showed about the um, the Amfran, which recently happened. So and you did mention that uh, that partition is equal to death, and so was Amfran. Yes. I wanted to ask. you, I wanted to ask you how different do you difference these two are like the, the death by partition and death by umfran. Both are yes, dead. yes, yes. How yes. do you see it? Uh, uh, basically, there is no difference. The it's uh, the from 1947 to uh, 2020, it's going on, going on, going on situation and. There is uh, nobody is particular about their situation, their home, their uh, family. They are uh, uh, completely they are in at stake condition each and every moment. Amphan is a fact; it's a natural calamity and that that thing. But uh, the, this is the one one thing which is very important to me right now. That COVID also very important to me uh, important to me very right now. But uh, the situation if you have uh, you want to see just the, that's why i am traveling in many places that 4500 kilometer area i want to see i want to uh, the the uh, area which is uh, the problem is completely different from one one to another one to another this is the thing we, there is no relation between uh, suppose uh, north of bishpargana's area the, the difficulties the problem and uh, if you go to uh, Malda, Murshidabad, the uh, dif uh, problem is completely different from them. Understand my point? The, 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 that's why I have to see, I have to uh, communicate with people directly. I have to take interview and uh, the, the, that is my inspiration. And uh, the black is coming out from that darkness of their mi mind, in, uh, uh, along with my mind also. Uh, no, we that. Uh, it's uh, always they the, 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 they are talking uh, very very uh, artificially. Uh, I asked um, many people that smuggling is going on. Uh, the, everybody told me no 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 no. Uh, it was there, but it was here. But right now it's very okay, very okay condition. We are very okay. There is no smuggling here. But I had seen at that time that my smuggling is going on. This is the situation. The the, the dilemma. The, the Conflict, everything is going on. I uh, uh, talked with BSF uh, uh, people, so uh, uh, I, I want to. Uh, but, uh, I, I, the, when I talk, the, 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 they actually uh, prefer they are not people; they are BSF. So uh, tell me again, tell me again. I told them, but uh, he told me we are not people. You are civilian, and we are BSF. So BSF is a is a is a, is a uh, what is this? But BSF is a uh, complete uh, dead man or something. That that is the thing. Understand my point? I think. So then, and uh, they, they they talk to me and they always told me uh, we go back home. You are a 
a professor, you are a uh, blah, blah, blah things. And uh, please go back home. You have a family. Don't disturb me. Here, a fear-generated area that the anxiety is going on. Why you are here? Uh, many things are there. Beautiful landscapes, beautiful hills and rivers. Uh, uh, floating rivers are there. Uh, the, this is the theme for, for your Kalakar Adri ke liye to yehi hai jo uh, aap kar sakte hai. Why you are coming here? Uh, uh, this is, uh, you don't uh, lose your time. Uh, forget about that bordering area. Uh, uh, can you give me a painting? Uh, yeah, yeah, why not? But uh, we, uh, the painting should be very beautiful. Quote unquote beautiful. <laughs> so, so this is the meaningless thing and I want to travel that's why this is the, the pro project is not finished that we, uh, people are here people are there and I am staying in Ashok Nagar which is completely uh, suburban area and uh, 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 they are, all our refugees are here uh, they came from Bangladesh in 1947 and uh, they are very interesting to me also. And uh, I have to see uh, more, more, more areas of uh, that kind of and most complicated uh, area of uh, Bangladesh and India border is most complicated in globe. This is the mm. thing. Thank you. Yeah, there, there are such twins, uh, twin sister or twin brothers that how do you separate them? Because my brother at one point of time was in the border security force and he used to say that, you know, uh, how do you call it smuggling when you are actually smuggling from one within one house? Because half of the house is in India and half is in Bangladesh. So how do you call it smuggling? But that that happens. And I mean, there's a yes, course, yes, uh, yes both perspectives to it that even as a as border security force how they understand partition and the pain and you know this kind of a thing like you know painting is supposed to be beautiful and why are you trying to capture exactly. the pain through your painting yeah that's uh, that's where yes, I yes. Think, uh, audience question here now next one for uh, Debashish Debashish this is I'm this question I'm taking because this I also wanted to ask uh, Arindam is asking that you chose to retain the part where it says Amazon.in on the envelope uh, stroke package. Any particular reason behind that? No, I think it adds a, a very contemporary edge to it, uh, number one. Because see, uh, I, one thing is very clear that at the time of, uh, see, lockdown in Delhi, I don't know, Calcutta never had because the fish markets kept opening. So Delhi had very severe uh, lockdown. So first, uh, when they announced about 22 days and we could not go out at all. And I wasn't really, none of us were, and I, my studio and my home are two different places. And I normally don't uh, work at home. So my, all the material was in the studio and I couldn't go. So I certainly it is seen a lot of people use, uh, uh, you know, packing uh, board as a uh, medium. And for them, there'll be a clean, neat, you know, you can always buy one. So I uh, held on to the, uh, you know, the inbuilt text it had, or the texture, even the sticker, I could have removed the sticker, but I think it added uh, just another dimension to the entire work. Mm. So for, this is for the artistic uh, uh, value that you actually saw in that. So amazing. Um, yeah, and it, I... adds, uh, in, in, and it adds the, you know, from where I'm coming, you know, mm. why I'm eating, uh, you know, piece of paper or a board. Yeah, that's true. <coughs> and uh, uh, yeah, Devashish, another question for you is that uh, on one hand, uh, you are using a very soft material like fabric and the weaving, which is a very intricate technique. On the other hand, you're uh, using graphite, which is of course a soft stone, but it is still a stone. And th this is quite a contrast. And at the same time, there is a commonality that both have layers uh, into them. So can you just elaborate on this choice of diff the contrasting medium in your work? No, so I, uh, I work with mixed media and I don't, a lot of people, actually the last show which I did with Atar Prakar was the River Song, had primarily textiles. It was, um, uh, I would say the 80% of the works had textiles. But I don't, and if you see my, uh, the previous solo, which called the museum within had uh, a lot of wood 
and, and once it, it had us one textile piece, but not all. So I don't uh, decide on, uh, you know, an A medium and start working. No, I think it's the uh, subject which derives that or the drives what I'm going to be using. So this particular, when I was talking about memories and I was talking about family, I was talking about portraits. So I think the textile walked in um, unknowingly. And, uh, and, and I work with textiles a lot in general. I've done a lot of research with textile people and textile, I've, I've been working with textile for almost 25 years, but this time I thought is the time to use because I think uh, number one, and the reason is uh, layered. And the second, if you think about the, the warp and the weft and the way, you know, it, it start appearing like lines and, and, and it created a canvas for me and I had a lot of immense possibilities. I couldn't think of when I was talking about my mother or when talking about my uh, Dida, I, I, when I was talking about my father, I didn't, couldn't think of wood or cement or anything else. So I think fabric came very, very naturally. And the fabric, you know, is one thing I feel is, is, is part of us. You know, when, when somebody is born in our family, you know, I remember how Dida gave a kata, or you think about, you know, you always give a newborn a, a fabric, textile. And when you die also, the last thing what you worry about is a piece of cloth. So textile remains a very, very integral part of uh, our life. And somehow we, I, 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 I kind of wove that theory into this particular journey when I was talking about my family and, and my past. I guess I answered. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you did answer. My last uh, question is to Amrita. Amrita, of course, you did mention that you are uh, not directly uh, connected with the pain of partition uh, because your parents were always on this side of the uh, country. Um, so we are all aware of the corona situation today. And before that, we saw how the refugees were leaving from their uh, places where they were working and trying to come back to uh, their homes. So there is migrated, migration uh, happening within the country due to this pandemic. Do you think that there is any similarity between these current events and the one that took place at the time of partition? Uh, so. And what do artists and art world think about this? Yeah. I think uh, when it was happening, every, every single one was reconnecting to that only, you know? And uh, uh, it, you don't need to be an artist to do that. So uh, I think uh, that is what I mean by people's stories, which everyone feels. And this was something so phenomenal. So uh, of course, we, our generation, we have not seen partition or we have not seen that aftermath, but we have seen this right now. And, uh, you know, it is, it is something so obvious then that uh, if you, if you uh, when people have seen this thing happening, uh, then this is, this is, I think, this is our, you know, condition that we are conditioned to think back to that thing only about the partition, about people leaving. And uh, uh, I think uh, that is uh, world history's largest migration. That is what it is called. And uh, so, so it was something so reflect reflective. Thank you so much. I'm just uh, trying to answer as many questions from the audience. We, I think we have taken uh, most of them, except for one. Uh, uh, one of you can volunteer to answer this. I'll just read it out. How can we understand the violence that brewed during the time of partition? What ignited the communal viral violence for days at a stretch for an apparent peaceful process that was drawn out on paper? I don't think it was a peaceful process at all. If you, uh, if you study the history of that time, it was not peaceful from any angle, you know. Uh, so, so I think uh, there's a flaw in the question itself only. Uh, so actually, the, the question is the, the, the person is trying to uh, ask that there was so much of violence in, in that time. So how could uh, that violence be shown in a peaceful process that was drawn out on the paper? Okay, the, all the, right. Huh. Yeah. Uh, so no, I think that uh, I, I'm I'm not trying to make it very peaceful, you know, because uh, there are a lot of violences because memory is all also something violent. When you're divided into two parts, that uh, which one will I choose? And even if I choose one side, then also other half of me is longing for the other side. So this is not peaceful, you know. 
and this is what i tried to depict in my particular work that all your experiences that you have lived here in bengal uh, for throughout your life for me and and we have seen so many different things so it has not to it need not to be very underlined you know but it's in it's embedded in our life uh, even if i don't have a personal story even if i have not heard that one particular uh, piece of violent story but it's all there and i think we all remember this year only when uh, just uh, this pre corona time the last derby match that we have over here in is bengal mohan bagan so that that huge banner that was written uh, in bengali that rakt diye ke na mati kagoj diye na hai and that was viral throughout the world i think so so it was there so i cannot say that is not violent you know so it it's all a reminder of that violence only isn't it yeah and i and I also that you know we don't have to relive that violence through our painting all the time there is and i think always the more important thing is that uh, if you remember that violence uh, you better not do that mistake one more time isn't it that's what uh, devushish we... was mentioning that you know uh, that the generation who was actually who actually suffered and witnessed this partition did not pass it on even paula mentioned that they did, the her grandparents did not partition that kind of hatred uh, to her like my grandparents also did not pass on the hatred to me for the community because they suffered whatever because they felt that it has to be detained where it it is it was so i think violence doesn't have to be relived all the time there are definitely different ways of uh, which you all have shown in your artwork you have shown the pain of the partition you have yeah. uh, tried to come try to you know uh, also uh, share the memories of your own families or your own childhood but yeah essentially it doesn't have to be definitely uh, showing violence in that sense directly so thank you so much to all of you i did deliberately extended this conversation because it was so going so much meaningful and it did not feel right to interrupt any one of you in between and the audience also stayed with us i think more, uh, hardly 10 15 people have left even now they are all staying with us so that's that mm-hmm. was an indication to me that people wanted mm-hmm. to listen and hence i continued yes. so thank you mm-hmm. so much all of you and we hope that we will do much more together and we will take this uh, forward and culminate into an exhibition as was the initial plan thank you so much rituparna rajshri all the panelists i'll uh, hand over the vote to my colleague moshmi again Yes, ma'am. Thank yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. Uh, we have reached the end of the session. Almost everyone would agree with me that uh, we have pensively recalled uh, melancholic memories uh, through this uh, discussion today. I would like to thank the panel for such insightful discussion. I would also like to thank those who were with us in the audience because without them, this uh, discussion would have been incomplete. I would request everyone. to follow our page on facebook instagram and website to receive more updates on our upcoming events once again i thank everyone for the delightful evening we had together stay safe good night thank, thank you very much thank you thank you bye